back. Vertical translation in the transformation derivative. This is very important basics to understand. Given a graph, a vertical translation, I'll use the graph of y equals absolute value of x. We know that it looks like this. Okay, I'm not going to label it. A vertical translation would be like that way to make it look like that, or down to make it look like that. Up, down, vertical, simple as that. How do we show that? Okay, well now I'm going to write some letters, numbers. Suppose this is plus 4, uh, and this is, uh, I'll move it down one. This is minus 5, okay, these are y values. The initial one here, that belongs to that. However, I'll draw it out and then I'll explain why. This one here is, you're up four units. So this is y equals absolute value of x plus four. Mysterious, hey? And this one would be, I bet you're guessing it right now, y equals the absolute value of x minus five, okay? does not take a rocket scientist to figure this out. However, I did it this way. I want to relate this to something you already know. Way back in the day, you learned about y equals mx plus b. Okay? How familiar does that look to this? y equals a slope of 1 okay? One, 1 absolute value of x plus any one of those things. Okay? This is the same shape. We know this already. It's in our it's in our brains. We get it. So this stuff shouldn't be anything mysterious or surprising. Similarly, to make it even easier, if y is just equal x. Okay? That's y equals x line right here. Well, this line here is y equals x plus 2. Looks a lot like y equals mx plus b, because really what it is, is y equals 1x plus 2. Okay? Vertical translations, just like y equals mx plus b. Okay? Nothing new. Nothing new, just a refresher.